Hi guys, welcome back. This is Mike Hermes at MH Tutorials and today we are going to uh, create a propeller and show you how to animate it. Okay. Now this is not necessarily uh, about how to model the propeller but more how to set up the animation which is pretty straightforward. Okay. But nevertheless we're going to create a propeller. All right. So for that we're going to start off with a polygon cylinder. We're going to pull that out. Pull it up a little bit. Okay, hit 5 for shaded mode, and we're going to tweak the settings a little bit. So we're going to go to our polish cylinder 1. We're going to create 40 subdivisions and 0 caps, like so. All right. Then we are going to right-click, go to Face, click on that, go to Edit Mesh and Extrude. Hit R to scale that in. W to pull it up a little bit, like that. Edit Mesh and Extrude again. R, scale it in. W to pull that up. Edit Mesh, Extrude to scale that in. Edit Mesh, Extrude to pull that straight up. Let's say something like that. Okay. And next what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, let me think, a polygon cylinder. We're going to drag that out. Pull that up. Increase the segments to 40. And we are going to set the translate values. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll select my object, translate values to zero, which will make sure it's nice and central. So now it's inside my model so far, and there it is, okay. We're gonna pull that up, make sure this guy is set at zero as well. And for this animation, it is very important that it's all centered. Otherwise, you're gonna get a strange animation. We're going to pull that down, something like that. Okay. We're going to right click on that, go to Edge, double click on that one, double click on that one, go to Edit Mesh and Bevel, something like so. And again, this is not necessarily about the animation, but I don't want it to look horrible either. So we'll just uh, take these two. Edit Mesh and Bevel as well. Okay. Now, next we are going to create a polygon sphere. Drag that out. Increase subdivisions to 40, like so. Set these translate values to zero as well. So it's nice and centered. So again, the Hang on, the sphere is inside my model here. Come on. Having a hard time selecting it for some reason. Interesting. There we go. Okay, I'm going to pull that up. Five for shaded mode. And let's squish that a bit. So hit R, squish it down, and hit R and scale it out a bit. Something like that. That's fine. All right. Now we're going to take two uh, polygon cylinders. We're going to pull them up. Increase subdivisions to, let's say, 40, like so. We're going to flip that by 90, so minus 90 in this case, okay, and we're going to set the translate values to zero, and we're going to select it, <coughs> excuse me, hit W and pull that up. Now we need to scale that down a bit, so we're going to go to our uh, side view, hit F to zoom in, and you can see I have to come down here a bit. We're going to scale it down to something like that. 
And while we're at it, we're going to select these three, hit W, and bring that down so it's in place. All right. So now that we got that, we are going to hit R to stretch that out a bit more and maybe make it a bit thinner. So hit R, scale it in, stretch it out, something like that. Okay. So now that we've got that, we're going to hit Control D. We're going to hit E. We're going to rotate it around. So we are at 90, like so. We're going to create some propeller clamps, if you will. So for that, we are going to create a cube, pull it up a little bit, and make sure that it's uh, square. So let's do three by three. Uh, so that's good. We're going to go to our uh, front view. We're going to go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. And we're going to put one there and one there. Something like that. Okay. Right click object mode. Oh, get rid of that last edge. There we go. Right click object mode. Hit F to zoom in. Right click on the face here. Actually on these two faces, sorry. Edit mesh extrude. Hit W, pull that out, something like so. Okay. And in our top view, we're going to add some more subdivisions. So go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and we're going to put one there and one uh, there. All right. Hit Q, right click, go to Edge, Select that edge, hit W and pull that out. I'm sorry. Drag select that edge and then pull it out. That's better. Like so. And we are going to select these edges here and go to Edit Mesh and Bevel, which will give us something like that. We can smooth that out by increasing subdivisions. So we'll go with 0 0.95 on the offset. That looks about right. Okay. Right click on that, object mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to get that into position and scale it down. Go to your top view. Hit W, move it over there. Now, obviously, we need to scale it down quite a bit something like that pull it in and we need to make sure that it's in the middle and you can do that by getting your red arrow on a grid line like that all right let's see where we're at just uh, checking some values here okay so we're going to hit Control D to duplicate that, pull it over, hit E to rotate it around, like so. And in this case, our blue line is on the grid line, so we can see if it's level, and we can see it here. This should be minus 180. Okay. Now we need to look at how far we need to bring it in. Okay, so... 4.066. We're going to bring that in. 4.066. All right. So these two are level. We're going to click these two, go to Mesh and Combine, hit Control D to duplicate them, and E to rotate them. Okay. These should be at exactly minus 90. So we're good there, okay? Now we need to bring them up to the correct height. There we go. 
in W, pull that up. And make sure that we get the right height. We'll check that from our side view. Need to come down a little bit. Okay, something like so. All right. Now for the propellers. What we're going to do is we're going to take a polygon cube. And we'll scale that in a sec. Obviously, keep them nice and thin. All right. Now, I want these corners here to be beveled. So right click, edge, take these two, edit mesh and bevel. Increase segments. And we're going to pull the offset up to 0 0.98. Okay. Uh, let's see if they are. We can make it a bit thinner. So, object mode. Hit R, scale it in. Nice and thin. Okay. And what we can do uh, additionally is. Uh, let's see what. Yeah, actually, we can do it this way. It's fine. Uh, I want them to be a bit longer, so I'm going to stretch that out a bit. Something like that. And then we're going to get them in place uh, based on our top view. So I'm going to hit W. I'm going to move that out. And pull that down. Make sure again that you're level with your grid line. Okay. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate that. Pull it over here. Hit E to rotate it all the way around. Okay. Make sure you're at 180. Now I need to bring this in. So that one is 18.632 out. So that would be 18.632. All right. Got these two. Go to Mesh Combine. Hit Control D and rotate that around until we're at exactly minus 90. We're going to check them from a height point of view. They need to come up, as you can see. So make sure that I got all four selected. And hit W and move them up until they are inside the clamps that we created. Like so. All right. So that's our basic setup. Now we need to animate this. All right. We're going to drag select everything. We're going to go to mesh and combine. Okay. Now what is very important is to make sure that your center pivot is exactly in the middle. Okay. So while we have this selected, we're going to go to modify and center pivot. Okay. So it's in the middle of the object here and it's in the middle of the object from a central point of view. Okay, so we want to animate this. First, what we're going to do is we are on keyframe one here, right? So we're going to hit S on the keyboard, which will create a keyframe on one. Now, we're going to take a number of uh, frames here. Let's say 300. Okay. Now, the thing is, I want this to rotate, let's say... Uh, well, at least once a second, let's say every half second, okay? So every half second is about every 12 frames, okay? So in 12 frames, you got 360 degrees. And what we'll do is, I'll just calculate that quickly. Okay, we're not going to do higher math here. Let's do uh, one rotation uh, per 20 uh, frames so that's less than a second okay so we're gonna click on 20 actually what we need to do is we need to rotate that and what we'll do is we'll do minus 360 while we're on frame 20 and we're gonna hit S on the keyboard actually you can do that here as well right click set key Okay, so you got that. We are going to go to frame 40. 
we're going to rotate again. So we're at uh, 720. And I'll just type that in here, minus 720. And right click, set key again. Okay, let's give this a try. I'm going to go back to our start. Okay, so we can do that all the way down. What you can also do is you can calculate the total rotation. So if every 360 degrees rotation is 12 frames, then you can calculate if my total scene is so long, okay, how many times do I want it to rotate? That's a total number of degrees rotation combined with your frames. But nevertheless, the idea you can see right here is that if we go to the start of our animation, you can see that it's rotating. Okay, just uh, you know to to show you once again how you can expand that. Select my object. So I got my start frame on zero. I got 360 degrees at uh, I think we're at 19, 20. Okay, 360 at 40. So let's do an additional one at 60. So I'm going to click on frame 60. I'm going to start to rotate again, so that would be 720 plus 360 is 1080, okay? So, minus 1080, all right? We're at frame 60. Just going to click out of that screen. Right-click, set key. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four keyframes. So, I'm going to go back to the start of my animation again, and I'm going to hit play. Okay, now the trick here is if you want your um, propeller to spin faster, obviously you need to complete a full rotation in less than 20 seconds. So if you want to double the speed, you're going to set your keyframe at keyframe 10, right, with 300 degrees rotation. So what it can do is from 60 to 70, we're going to speed it up. So we got a rotation going on at, let's say, the speed we have, right? Now I want it to start to do a full rotation in 10 frames. So I'm going to go to 70. Let's go exactly to 70 in this case. Okay. So we're at frame 70, and I want it to rotate an additional 360 degrees, right? Just make sure I don't mess up the math. That's 1440 degrees. Okay. So I'm at frame 70. Minus 1440. Okay. Right click on the 1440 and set key, and you've got an additional key set on 70. We're going to go back to our start, and what you should see is it's starting to rotate at a certain speed, and from frame 60 to 70, you'll see that the speed will increase. Okay. Here we go. So same speed, same speed, same speed, same speed, and now it's speeding up. You see that? Okay. And I'll just I'll, I'll walk you through that. So this is your normal speed, and there you go. It's starting to speed up quite a bit. Okay. Now um, that's kind of the idea behind this uh, quick tutorial, uh, just to give you a little bit of a sense of the keyframes. This is, of course, a very, very simple animation. Uh, no rigging involved and so forth. Just uh, for uh, you know, new users to kind of understand the basics of keyframing. Okay. Hopefully this was uh, helpful for you guys. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time. Bye.